In this tutorial, I'm going to show you a few ways to unwrap um, a complex geometry so you can start to texture map it um, very precisely. So the first thing we'll want to do, there's a few different ways to do this. This is a form I created from um, a set of lines with a surface, turbo smooth, and edit poly modifier. So now you just want to add an unwrap UVW modifier and that'll allow you to precisely place the texture on the geometry. There are a few ways to do it, so I'll show you all of them. Um, start by opening the UV editor, and then once you open the editor, you want to select polygon mode down here in the bottom left corner. Select all your polygons, and then go to mapping, and there are three different ways um, you can unfold this. The first one is just to say flatten mapping, um, and you can change these settings and see what they see the effect on the object, but I'm just going to say OK for now. And you'll see what it does is break up the form into multiple different patches. And you can see those patches reflected on the geometry. So if I select here this element, um, this will allow me to select each of these elements. So you can see if I select this one, that represents this surface here. So I can actually take this now. I can render this UV tile, it's called. It's called a... Um, it's one by one and it's a U and a V and everything has to fit within this window but you can render this and then take that as an image into, J into um, Photoshop and then actually start to draw um, your texture onto these surfaces save that file and then use that file as the bitmap and it will apply it exactly where um, like so if you draw a line here it'll apply that line on the geometry in relationship to this unfolded geometry. So it's a good way to start to precisely locate texture on the form. Um, another way you can do this, I'll go ahead and um, right click and delete that UVW map and add a new unwrap UVW, um, is to go to open UV editor, follow the same ser series of commands, so select um, your polygons and go to mapping, unfold mapping, um, and you'll get a different kind of dialog. If you deselect normalized clusters here, it will unroll the mapping as um, as a flat uh, ruled surface. So you can, if you know, if you had a laser cutter, you could actually cut out the outline and fold it back together. So that's if you deselect normalized clusters. Um, I'll just keep it selected for now because we're okay with distortion. We're not looking for a, a precise unfolding. And then you can see it's all overlapping. Each piece overlaps the other piece. So you want to make sure you pack these tiles by hitting this button within this UV tile. So that distributes everything into a separate little space. Um, you can see this also kind of unfolds it. It's a little bit differently. Um, it's a little more broken up. So if that's the kind of look you're going for, then you can use this and you can export again this as a image. And then one thing you could actually do is export that image, bring it into a program like Rhino or um, uh, AutoCAD and actually draw real geometry um, to match the surface and then use those lines, um, export them to Illustrator, change the line weight and use those lines and start to texture the, the surface with actual line work um, and colors and texture and material. Okay, so the last way I'm going to show you, I'm going to go ahead and close this, delete the unwrap UVW, is to use pelt mapping, which is very similar to like the pelt of a bear skin, for example. The first thing you have to do if you do this is add a UVW, unwrap UVW map, and then over here on the right, let's go ahead and open up this and go to face subobject mode. We have to define where we want the the seams to be of this pelt, and so since this is a closed geometry, I actually need to cut the geometry and allow it to unfold naturally. So what I'll probably do is pick the um, the seam down here at the bottom so it can unfold and I won't be messing up the top surface up here. It's also the easiest place to break the surface. So the first thing you want to do is create the seam. So over here on the right under peel you want to select this point to point seam. Select the first point and then the second point. Oh sorry. You can actually create the seam um, at the edge subobject mode. Oh, you know what? The normals are faced, uh, facing up, so my normals are actually facing down. So I actually have to be on the bottom of the surface, and I need to be working on the surface that the normals are facing. So now this will let me cut that seam. So when you're done, you can right click. So that blue line represents a seam that will allow um, be the location where it starts to peel apart. 
So once you have your seam, and you can add multiple seams, if you want to start making seams, so you want you know the pelt to break up in different ways, you can do that. Um, this is fairly simple, so I can just use that one seam. And then if I hit this pelt map here, um, it'll actually, and then zoom out. Oh, sorry. First thing you have to do is select a face. So I'm going to select a face. And then you have to select this option here, which is expand face selection to seams. So that's the the select whatever selected will be unfolded with the pelt mapping. So now you can hit the start pelt mapping, and then you'll get this pelt map. And you want to say start pelt, and you can see it kind of relaxes the shape. And you can do this a number of times until you, you're happy with the result. And I'm going to wait just a little bit until it's a little more symmetrical. And now I'm happy with that. So once you're happy, you can say commit. And then remember, you have to get that within the UV tile. So to do that, you just have to hit this button here, and that'll pack that within that tile. And so now if I go to Mapping, and you can do this with any of the different maps. If you go to Tools, Render UVW Template, you can then render that template as an image. These are your pixel dimensions, so the bigger this is, the bigger the image will be. So for example, if you're doing a huge rendering, you want to make sure your, your image is very big so that when you render it, the resolution of the image will actually look really crisp. I'll just use this uh, value for now. It wouldn't hurt to use a bigger value. It'll just create, and create a larger file size. But I'll go ahead and render that. And this is the, the template, so it renders like this. And then you can just save that as an image. So I'll just save that as test. Um, and you can save it as a TIFF file or a JPEG file. OK. And then if you open up Illustrator, you can actually open up that image. Let's see, test. And now I can literally start to paint over this image on a different layer. So I could, you know, take my paint brushes and start to paint an actual color on a different layer. Let's go ahead and create a new layer here. Um, and I'll just lock this layer. But, um, I, you know, I could add like a color into this square. So anything I place within this this outline will, if I save this as a bitmap, will show up on the surface when I apply that bitmap back to that object.